This is a video for the Density Required Practical, which is taught as part of AQA GCSE Physics and Combined Science. If you haven't already, you might want to watch the previous video about density in general, which goes into some of the calculations, because in this video we're mainly going to be focusing on the practical work. By the end of this video, you should understand what is meant by density, be able to recall the equation to calculate density, and be able to describe how to calculate the density of regular objects like cubes and cuboids, liquids and also irregular shaped solid objects. Density is a measure of how much mass is contained within a certain volume of a substance. In other words, if I have boxes of identical size, how do their masses compare to one another? Density is represented by the Greek letter rho, and it's found by dividing the mass of an object by its volume. The standard international units for density are kilograms per metre cubed, and you can probably work out from that that therefore we need our mass to be in kilograms and our volume in metres cubed. Usually, when you're actually measuring an object, it's much more likely that you'll be measuring in grams and centimetres cubed, so you may need to be able to complete these conversions, although sometimes they will ask you for the density in grams per centimetre cubed instead. Let's start by looking at regular objects. To calculate the density of any object, you need to know its mass and also its volume. And for a regular object like a cube or a cuboid, it's possible to calculate this. Firstly, I'll need a ruler or some calipers in order to take accurate measurements of the lengths and widths of the object. If we're thinking about a cuboid, we need to multiply the length by the width by the depth. But for a cube, those are obviously all the same. So you can just measure one side and then cube that number. This will give us the volume and we can then put this together with the mass in order to calculate what the density is. Here's a worked example. Say I want to calculate the density of a block that measures 20 by 40 by 4 centimetres and it has a mass of 12,800 grams. Firstly, I need to calculate the volume by multiplying together all of the sides. This gives me a volume of 3,200 centimetres cubed. I convert this to metres cubed by dividing by 1 million. I also need to convert the mass in grams to the mass in kilograms by dividing by 1,000. I can then use my density calculation. Density is mass divided by volume. So 12.8 kilograms divided by 0.0032 metres cubed gives me a density of 4,000. And the units are kilograms per metre cubed. Here are three questions of the same type for you to have a go at. For each one you'll need to calculate the volume, then convert this and mass to the appropriate units, and then finally calculate density. Pause the video now and have a go. For question 1, you should have divided 2.5 by 0 0.0005 to get a density of 5000 kilograms per metre cubed. For question 2, you should have calculated a density of 3750 kilograms per metre cubed. And for question 3, you should have a density of 3200 kilograms per metre cubed. Liquids don't have a fixed shape, but they do have a fixed volume, and so we can also calculate the density of these. You're going to need a balance and also a measuring cylinder. Firstly, you put the measuring cylinder onto the balance and set the mass to zero. Then you measure a set volume. Here it's always good to be measuring as large a volume as possible, as this will make you the most accurate. Then you need to measure the mass of the cylinder using the balance. So in this instance, I'd measured out 50 centimetres cubed of oil and the mass of that oil was 45.53 grams. I can now work out that the density will be 0.04553 divided by 0.00005. That gives me a density of 906.6 kilograms per metre cubed. And that makes sense because I know that oil is slightly less dense than water and water has a density of a thousand. Here's an opportunity for you to have a go at a few more of these calculations. For these five liquids, you need to use the formula density is mass divided by volume in order to work out what the density of each one is. The masses and volumes have already been converted for you into appropriate units. So pause the video now and give the calculations a go. Hopefully you were able to calculate that the density of honey is 1420, the density of soap is slightly lower at 1060, rubbing alcohol is less dense than water with a density of 780, whereas mercury is incredibly dense with a density of 13,600 kilograms per metre cubed. 
Finally, liquid aluminium has a density of 2,380 kilograms per meter cubed. The final part of the required practical asks you to calculate the density of irregular shaped objects. We're not talking cubes and cuboids or even cylinders and spheres anymore. We're talking things that don't really have a named shape and don't have a way that you could just calculate them. In order to calculate the density, we need to know what the volume is, but in this instance, we're not going to be able to work that out mathematically, so we need an alternative method. For this, you're going to use a piece of equipment called a displacement can. To calculate the density of an irregular shaped object, we need three pieces of equipment. Firstly, a balance to measure the mass. Then a displacement can, or you might have heard it called by its nickname, a Eureka can. And finally, a measuring cylinder which we use to collect the displaced water. I start by measuring the mass of my object, and I do this at the start so that I'm not introducing any inaccuracy by measuring the mass of water that's left on the object after I've measured its volume. The mass in this instance is 20.94 grams. I'm now going to use the displacement can to work out what the volume of the object is. The displacement can has been completely filled with water until it starts to come out of the spout. So now if I add any other object into it, this will push the water out of the way, in other words, displacing it, and I can use the measuring cylinder to collect this water. The volume of water displaced will be equal to the volume of the object, and I can then use this information to calculate the density. So by looking at the measuring cylinder, I can now see that eight centimetres cubed of water have been displaced, and therefore the volume of my object was eight centimetres cubed. You should be aware while measuring the volume and the mass that there are some potential sources of error. You probably saw at the end there that my can splashed at the end and so there was a little bit of water that I didn't collect in the measuring cylinder. So that would lead me to think that the volume was smaller than it actually was. It's also possible, particularly if you're measuring multiple objects, that the water level might not actually be right up to the spout before you put the object in. So it's really important each time that you completely fill up the can past the spout to let water come out to make sure that it's definitely level with the spout. If you measure using the measuring cylinder and you don't hold it at eye level and measure from the meniscus, then that could also lead to inaccuracy in the measurement of your volume. Also, as we said, if we'd measured the volume before measuring the mass and then we didn't dry the object properly in between, then we could end up with a heavier mass than the true mass of the object because we'd also be measuring the mass of the water. Once you know the mass and the volume of your irregular shaped object, you're able to calculate density in the same way that you've done previously. Density is mass divided by volume. I would begin by converting my measurements into the standard international units. So for instance, 20.94 grams becomes 0 0.02094 kilograms. And similarly, the volume would be converted into meters cubed. I can then divide the mass by the volume to get a density of 2,617.5 kilograms per meter cubed. In some questions, you won't be asked to use the standard international units, and you'll be told to keep your answer in grams per centimeter cubed. If this happens, then you don't need to perform these conversions. So here I would do 20.94 divided by 8, and I would have an answer of 2.6175 grams per centimetre cubed. It's very common in the GCSE science exams for the required practicals to form the basis of those 4 to 6 mark extended response questions. This is a really good practical for them to ask you to write a method, and that could either be a complete method for working out the density, or it might be a partial method like this one, asking you how you would go about measuring the volume of this paperweight. So pause the video and see if you can write down the five steps necessary to measure the volume. Firstly, you need to fill a displacement can with water, and it's vital that the water level is in line with that spout. Then you place the paperweight into the water so that water is displaced, and you need to collect that displaced water. You then use a measuring cylinder to determine what the volume of the water is, and this will be equal to the volume of the paperweight. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you found this a useful summary of how to complete the density required practical for AQA GCSE Physics. If you found the video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Physics content coming soon.